I suppose it's easy to say it's fluff, but fashion is the means of expressing yourself. It's the most personal way you can communicate to somebody what you're feeling today, who you are, who you're inspired by. Although I do understand that for a lot of people, they're just going to say, you know, you can just wear the jeans and the sweater and who cares. But by just putting on jeans and a sweater or a t-shirt, that does say something. I like a lot of things. I'm not pegged to one style. I wish I were thinner. That, I guess my clothes say that. I wish I were younger. I dress for myself. Are people afraid of you? Maybe. <laughs> I, I think they are. Um, I've been told they are. Can't imagine why. Um, I think I'm nice. Do you judge people by what they're wearing? Of course! <laughs> Not in a moralistic, I judge you and there's no turning back because I've condemned you to this judgment way, but clothes say a lot about what you are in the same way that fashion magazines will tell you what kind of country you're in. If you look at our pages, there's a lot that tries to move in step with newest, hottest, latest in New York, Paris, London, Tokyo. But because of economics, there's a lot of people who are just beginning to like fashion. It's dictated by economics because if you have money, then you can buy the things straight away. And if you don't, you sit and you dream. In the last few years, you've had a number of it girls. Yes. What is an it girl? An it girl is somebody who is, I guess, the darling of the public. They were the ones that you would look up to, to what they were wearing. They have to inspire. And there was a certain high society factor that embraced them in the way that, let's say, regular celebrities didn't really have. The downside of aspirational is that people mostly feel that they're not good enough. How do you feel about that? Girls not feeling they're thin enough, or tall enough, or pretty enough, or rich enough? It's difficult for me to put it into words, primarily because the magazine really deals with fashion and not self-esteem. I think it would be really naive of me to say that when you read preview, you should be self-confident. And I guess there are a lot of people who read it and who are lacking in self-confidence. So let's just say that how we address this is really we try to promote or use a lot of different types of women and different types of body shapes as well. In that sense, we hope that what we're showing is style that you come by by making your own. I suppose it's partly our fault. I mean, the magazine, that there's been an epidemic of people putting an emphasis on, let's say, tributes and Birkins and posing with tributes and Birkins. I think to purchase them is not a bad thing if you can afford it and if the money is really yours to begin with. Some people like to gamble, some people like to go on trips, other people find pleasure in fashion, and other people find pleasure in showing other people that they can afford expensive stuff. I suppose, you know, who you are is up there anyway. It's the way you really carry it because you could be in your Birkin and Tribs, but if you have no conscience, if you have no confidence, if you can't hold your head up high, then what for are all these tools? Why do you do what you do? Because there's no one else. 
Because I love it. I, I like the creative process. There weren't very many people. I mean, I fell into this thing by accident. I thought I was here for six months, a temporary job, and I would go back to being a producer, but I got stuck. I, get, I fell in love with fashion. I learned, I guess, you're fighting for a group of creatives who are sort of passionate about what they do. Um, but, um, <laughs> can I just say because no one else will do it? It's because, you know, the community of creatives who do what they do and do it sometimes not even for money but really for love, it's a great honor. I know, I guess this is, I don't know, this is what I'm supposed to do.